Hello, Crossroads family and online friends. Pastor Bobby here. Today is a special day. We are celebrating in person our 25th anniversary as a church. And I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us online as we're celebrating in person. And today we have for you 25 years of reminiscing about the things God has done in and through our church. And so in a few moments, you're going to hear us about 25 minutes long, just sharing about the journey of our church. We thank you for tuning in and for watching and for catching up and also just uh, appreciate your support and online as well as coming in person. We invite you if you're traveling to come by and join us on a Sunday morning or if you're local, come by and visit so that we can meet you in person. But again, we just wanted to take the opportunity to invite you in to celebrate with us even though you can't be here in person and enjoy the story of our pilgrimage over 25 years. God bless you. Hello everyone, we're celebrating 25 years of Crossroads Community Church. And Wanda and I are here with our friends Paula and Billy Vanskoy, and uh, they've been with us for uh, almost 25 years, not quite. And we join, have them join us today. They've been serving as elders for uh, a long time. And now Billy's on staff. Paula's leading our, our um, Freedom Ministries. And so we just invited them to come and to reminisce a little bit about the significant things that God has done over the years. I want to begin by talking about the beginnings. Crossroads really started with one word, and that is the name of our church, Crossroads. God gave it to us three different times. And he gave us a Bible verse, and so he got our attention, and then we started looking for a place. And he led us to Winchester. Mm. And that's where we met you and wonderful friends that uh, we've been together now for 25 years. Mm. Our children were six and four and two when we moved. Mm. And um, it's just been an amazing ride together of these 25 years. I can't believe it's been that long. But uh, God has been good. So I remember when <clears throat> when we first came on, it was like in a really critical moment of the church where it was going. They're going to continue to go or go back into the homes versus staying on Sundays. And so it, I know it was a prayer time for you all to decide what you were going to do. And then lo and behold, our group shows up. So that was that was a really a, I think a beginning watershed moment for all of us yeah. to um, have the beginning of. A uh, new era in Crossroads just to, to go from that moment on. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We started really with uh, three families and two singles. And that's the beginnings of Crossroads, in our family and in our home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, you guys, when we moved to the first location, mm -hmm. we were in seven locations in the first uh, seven years, eight years. Yeah. And so uh, some places we were there for five years, other places several months. So first of all, started out our home. Then we went to Agape Christian Church, and then we moved to another location at Agape. Actually, three locations in that building. Correct. That's right. And then uh, we moved to Daniel Morgan Middle School for about five years. Mm -hmm. And then we went to, um, where next? New Hope. New Hope. Yeah, that was an evening time. For summertime. For mm -hmm. summertime. And then uh, uh, we just needed to get back on Sunday mornings. And so we ended up in on Shenandoah University campus. Yeah. Mm -hmm for three months, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we went to Jam and Jim. Yeah. And the only thing good about Jam and Jim was we knew we were gonna leave it. <laughs> uh, it, it was, was fun. Yeah, yeah it, was it, fun. Was good. it was fun. But then uh, we we're in our current location. We moved in in 2007. So I don't know, actually then it was uh, when we moved into Daniel Morgan that we had an office space under the Red Apple Deli, which mm -hmm. was a little convenience store up the street. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I, I mean, you're watching this, maybe you remember when you joined and uh, the people that you joined with and, and uh, that was significant for you and for us along the way in those seven different locations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you all had a memory at one of those times that uh, you wanted to share. I remember being in the Red Apple Deli because that's the first time that we really had our worship team rehearsals. Because it started out with just me on the keyboard. Um, and so when we were at the bottom of Red Apple Deli, those big columns in the middle, there and that's when you joined and mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of fun times and of course you remember the first time you used distortion on the that's guitar right. yes. which is pretty huge because <laughs> yeah. that opened up a whole yeah. new 
vista in our it worship. Did. <laughs> it, it unpacked all kinds of good stuff there. <laughs> yes. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was fun. A lot of memories there. Yeah, we uh, during that time, we also sent on our first mission team, the Crossroads mission team mm-hmm. to Kyrgyzstan. And Billy and Paula, you guys were a part of that team. Yeah. So that was significant. Yeah, in 2001, um, we went to Kyrgyzstan, and um, we had a team together that we were um, very excited about going on a mission trip, and some of us had been before, some of us had not. And um, we really did not know where we were going to go or how we were going to go. or um, And we got the privilege of going with an evangelist um, to... Well, we actually accompanied him to um, go and participate in crusades. And wow, um, long time ago, but I still remember. Yeah, it, it was had a well. big, significant impact on you all that, that went. <clears throat> that yes. you brought that oh, wow. back to us. Absolutely, uh, mm-hmm. it was huge because it really there was some signs, wonders, and miracles that happened yes. that were not necessarily happening at home. So I remember that it was very right. significant. Yeah, right. <clears throat> absolutely. It was it was really one of the first times where. You knew, like I knew healing existed, but I actually had uh, a neck injury, and for two years it had never and it had never healed. And it wasn't until we were praying for people one evening, where I raised, you know, put my hand on my neck to be healed in that spot. The very next day, that pain was gone. <clears throat> and when I asked God about why did you wait till now to do it, His answer was, if I would have done it back in the states you wouldn't have attributed it to me. Mm-hmm. And so that, wow. that you know, it was, it was mm-hmm. personally significant for me, but it also for others coming back to know that, I mean, prayer really is real. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and healing really is for now. Yeah. And so even if you didn't feel like you could want to pray for someone or that, you know, what, what is my prayer going to do? It's significant. So mm-hmm. it, was, yeah. it was very important. We had numerous missions trips that did that. Yes. And, and had significant impact yes. over, overseas as well. Correct. Yeah. Right. Right. One team that was sent to Kenya, they had amazing signs, wonders, and miracles. They had an anesthesia that, yeah. that uh, mm-hmm. uh, again, didn't run out. They had, I mean, it was just amazing healings. And uh, in fact, that team that we sent actually birthed a movement in Kenya that is like over 2,500, 3,000, like eight or 10 churches. It's just amazing mm-hmm. how God used the Crossroads team during that time to really birth a movement there in that part of Kenya. Oh, absolutely. You know, those early years too, we we did Harp and Bowl ministry. I mean, we kind of picked that up recently, but every Friday night we did Harp and Bowl together, just worship and pray. Mm-hmm. I think that was significant. Yeah. And uh, then the way we did discipleship back then was, we called it to, to go through the bases. And, uh, you know, one was membership and the other one was had to do with freedom. And, and, and then, you know, uh, I forget what the third one was, but <laughs> the fourth one I know had to do with leadership. Yeah. And uh, that's just how we did it back then and uh, kind of walk through, people through a simple discipleship path. That was important. Mm-hmm. Well, um, you know, we move out of uh, the first 10 years into the second 10 years. And um, when you look at that, it's really at the period of time when we moved into our current space. And then uh, from about 2007, when we moved in February, up until 2000 and, uh, um, you know, 15, 16, where uh, the last uh, five years. So, um, you know, some significant things that happened there. We, uh, we participated in what they call the Winchester outpouring mm-hmm. during that time. Mm-hmm. And that's where three different churches in the area joined together and just uh, decided that we're going to meet and see what God wants to do. Mm-hmm. Right. And that was really significant because... Uh, uh, well, if you remember, it came on the heels of the Lakeland Outpouring because things were happening mm-hmm. there. You visited. Correct. And I th- we, we feel like you brought something back because things started happening within some evening meetings, even, even at Agape. And yeah. then uh, the three pastors stood up together and said, sure. we're in this together. This is about the church, not about a congregation. Yeah. Right. And that was another significant marker, not only just for Crossroads, but for the community uh, and what it really burst amongst the pastors. Really did, it, it solidified. Now we started in early 2000s uh, doing pastoral prayer summits where the pastors would uh, go and meet together and pray. That forged relationships. But then as we did the Winchester outpouring, that forged more relationships among ch- area churches. 
And then when we got to 2010, 11, when we did the 21 day presence mm. centered, that really, <clears throat> I, I was just talking earlier, that really um, was, we were able to do that because of the relationships that we built sure. in That's early right. 2000 and through the, the Winchester outpouring. And then the, uh, they, they were all like, we're ready to do this. Mm -hmm. I was sharing mm -hmm. earlier that, uh, that we met uh, in uh, a daily grind that shut down now. And, and I shared the vision for the 21 day presence centered divine experiment. And the pastors were so touched. The spirit of God was in that place. Some were crying. They were like, let's do this. And that was so significant mm -hmm. for our church. It marked our church. It, it changed did. our church. What do you remember about the 21 days? I remember there was no room to sit or stand yeah. <laughs> yeah it was packed out and I still remember our kids were young then and um, mm -hmm. all their friends the kids came every night they were all on the floor they were up, know, front. up yeah, front, front with their coloring books yeah for hours yeah and they still have great memories of that time and um, they might not have understood everything going on but mm -hmm. something happened yeah there was an impartation there for sure sure yeah. we also had significant people come in <laughs> and just speak to us and encourage us. Uh, mm -hmm. Tony Fitzgerald came in, taught us about finances and the kingdom of God, which was helpful. Mm -hmm. Robert Henderson came, mm -hmm. taught us about the courts of heaven and maybe stretched us a little bit, but, but it was all good and that was very significant for our church. Uh, we even had Todd White yeah. come mm -hmm. several before times he was before he was <laughs> famous. <laughs> White, right? yeah. And then of course his, uh, his uh, Dan Moeller, which is the guy that discipled him, came a couple of times. and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, yeah, I need to I need to really circle back a little bit and say mm -hmm. that uh, in 2000 is when we joined Dove, yeah, mm -hmm. and Dove International, and mm -hmm. uh, wow, what an incredible journey that's been because they really took to me personally as a pastor that came out of a difficult situation, they really brought healing to my life, mm -hmm. and then just their oversight and guidance through planting a church and what it means to be established was just mm -hmm. invaluable. Do you remember the engagement when, when Ron and Bonnie Meyer came down uh, in the Little Mennonite Church in Stephen yes. City? Yeah. I do. Yeah. That was so powerful. <clears throat> I mean, it really seemed to solidify us, those who were part of it back then. Mm -hmm. It's like we felt we were connected. We were actually a real thing. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, I remember it being very special. Yeah. yeah, we met all over the community. Mm -hmm. uh, that Mennonite Church, we, we engaged Dove, and you were ordained then. I know we did a, 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 some kind of teaching in the Nazarene Church. <laughs> that was uh, in our neighborhood, and we just met wherever we could. Yeah. yeah. So that, uh, that that second ten years was really really significant mm -hmm. in uh, moving us up into you know 2017 and so forth. The other significant thing is that you know I tell people we moved into the building for some reason we just struggled financially mm -hmm. as a church body for many years. In fact, uh, we purposed to tithe to our oversight, and during that time, I felt like we couldn't. And uh, we, we came together as an elder team, and one of our new elders came on and said, hey, uh, whatever the cost, we're going to tithe. Right. And, uh, and we did, and things changed. And then God taught us about first fruits, mm -hmm. and that was significant, that uh, we learned to understand the blessing of first fruits mm -hmm. uh, giving and, and, and how to steward that. And uh, uh, I, I believe that it was the understanding of first fruits that really turned us around into just becoming and being and thinking having a culture of generosity in our church that's uh, prominent today. I'm a, I'm a data guy, so data, our data shows that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's the facts that when we did the first fruits coupled with the tithing, that our church just financially just e exploded, which has continued throughout, throughout the years since that time. So yeah, yeah. it was a marker. Yeah, it was a, definitely a marker mm -hmm. for us. God has been so good. Mm -hmm. So the last five years, have been fun in some ways, yeah. challenging in many ways as well. But uh, the last five years, God has just, you know, um, uh, numbers-wise, has just continued to grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I remember I had a lawn business for a period of time, and I'm like, I can't do both. I've got to start, you know, really giving full time to pastoring, and and so pass that off. And and then we grew as a staff uh, mm -hmm. more. It was just you know myself and a secretary for a long time, and. And then we brought on, I don't know who, I'll get this all mixed up, but you know, <laughs> we brought on uh, uh, Chris and then Alicia as children's pastor. And then of course we always had a worship, you know, we now have a director of worship and, 
and uh, then we brought on Nick. Nick, uh, he was youth and young adult, and uh, and then recently we brought you on as executive pastor. Mm-hmm. And after how many and, years? Yeah, <laughs> very long Waiting. time. Very long time. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, it, it just you know really all of that explosion of the staff happened because of the numbers that took place. Mm-hmm that God just bring in the numbers. Mm-hmm. The other um, reality that happened that, I mean, COVID uh, came and uh, that was challenging, but it, it brought us into live stream. And mm-hmm. uh, Pastor mm-hmm. Nick, that's uh, standing here behind the camera mm-hmm. today, he was the one that really spearheaded, uh, really bringing us a quality experience for a live stream. And it was new for him, but he, he trudged jumped through right and mm-hmm. jumped right in it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so, uh, I mean, that really mm-hmm. brought Crossroads, uh, not just that, but um, it really brought cro- Crossroads to a new level of of just uh, people seeing, even even online, seeing Crossroads as their church, mm-hmm. even though they live in other parts of the nation or even around the world. Mm-hmm. And that's just astounding to me. I mean, the other factor that happened is that with Wanda's voice, that uh, the Lord, she'd been blogging for many years. And mm-hmm. during that time around election, 2020 election, it just the God began to promote her voice and her perspective. Mm-hmm. And um, and people would come to the church because they had heard Wanda right. online first. And that was a new new endeavor for us that mm-hmm. we're like, wow. Uh, um, but it was a good thing. It was good. And, uh, and we've grown as a result of that. Um, I don't know. Last five years, you guys got any thoughts and mm. and things that you uh, that stand out to you? <clears throat> the last five years has been it's been exciting. It's been challenging, but it has, it really has been exciting because our, our vision has expanded. Mm. The people has expanded. We've gotten new things to consider and do, and we're we're doing more apostolically now. Mm-hmm. It's we are, you know, we are. A world away from where we started 25 years ago That's and, right. and had and had we now if we if back then we could have said in 25 years this is where we'd be doing I don't think I don't think I would have felt no that's that, that's too too big mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you know mm-hmm. this last five years it's it's you know Katie bar the door hold on mm-hmm. tight because mm-hmm. things are happening and it's good stuff you know that and part of that growth too is the next generation that's coming Absolutely. up that we right. see yeah. a whole wave of you know, young adult, new leaders, which is just such a joy, because it's always been our heart. I mean, it's part of our, our vision statement of building a legacy. And mm-hmm. to be a part of that, you know, on this end is really exciting. And, you know, I'm looking forward to the next 25 years, you know, to, yeah. to see yeah. that continue, because that's very rare, you know, in congregations to actually see it continue to grow and to, to build out, you know, not just trade positions, but to expand, you know, beyond just the foundations and, and to see even more and more fruit, you know, in, in the Great. kingdom. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that. In the last yeah. five years as well, we've done two conferences, church mm-hmm. conferences. Mm-hmm. One was uh, the prophets, pastors, and intercessors, mm-hmm. and that was really impacting for people that came. And then recently we held one that we kind of had a misfire because of COVID, but the prophetic training course that so we had people from 13 states come and uh, just really hungry. Mm-hmm. to understand the prophetic and we mixed in you know other things as well as the pastoral and the apostolic gets mixed mm-hmm. in because that's who we are right. mm-hmm. and uh and so it, that was really exciting to do those uh, church conferences that uh, that everybody jumped in and and uh, it was so well uh, um, administrated and organized and mm-hmm. and um yeah, it was really, really exciting. To me, it's just an indication. God has brought us to this point. I feel like this whole first 25 years has really been preparation sure. mm. to see much of what we have been seeding come to fruition mm-hmm. in a major way. Mm-hmm. I mean, just even the increase of staff, the resourcing. I'm really looking forward you know, to what God has ahead and mm-hmm. who gets to be a part of it. You know. Uh, you know, jump in because it's just getting good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The other significant thing that happened is we raised over five hundred thousand dollars during COVID in mm-hmm. twenty three months <laughs> for the place that God is going to take us next, mm-hmm. and that is no small feat. Right. When right. I think about that, it's just that was just all God. Yeah. To be able to raise that amount of money, and um, I mean, it's it's there. It's in a holding pattern, but but uh, we're we're ready for where God's gonna send us next right okay. especially yeah. when you think about during COVID, it was locked down but it was yeah. also locked down people's finances and jobs and everything else and everything was uncertain so you could in the natural expect that giving would taper off or go down 
but in this case here, God, was, it was just, it was enormous. And yes. so it, it could be nothing but God mm -hmm. in this whole situation yeah. during yeah. COVID. So I think that during these 25 years, it's really helped solidify who we are. I mean, churches, yeah, we, we, we're here to display Christ, but I think there's certain characteristics that churches have that God gives them a gift to those that come and even in the body of Christ or in the community in which we live. And, mm -hmm. and the Lord really has helped me to identify five of those characteristics that we talk about in our membership class. Mm -hmm. And the first is we seek to be presence-centered. Mm -hmm. when we come and worship together is that's important to us that's intentional that happened because of the 21 days that we become a presence centered uh, church and people remark when they come in that the presence of God is here it's not something we invite or tell them it's something that they tell us right mm -hmm. uh, the second is we're relationship oriented we're not programmed oriented it's through relationship we look mm -hmm. and see who's connected with who to start small groups and 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 things uh, that's really really important uh, the third thing is, and this has been with us from the start, is that we're interested in setting people free. Mm -hmm. And I know, Paula, you're giving leadership to that. You're doing an incredible job. Yeah. And God is even sending our team out yeah. now mm -hmm. to uh, other churches and other yeah. locations that have heard about it. Okay. They've been coming to us to get resourcing. That's just a ministry that I think is just on the beginning stages of flourishing. Absolutely. And that's really important to yeah. us that we, uh, yeah. that we help people get set free mm -hmm. from the things that accumulate in their lives. Yeah. And uh, so then um, uh, the other things connected with that is that we're involved in uh, community transformation. I mean, we want to see heaven come to earth in mm -hmm. Winchester. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a, a group that prays every Friday morning. Mm -hmm. started in 2009 called Pray Winchester. And we pray for the city uh, there. And there's a faithful group of people that, that, that pray about that. And uh, I think that's really, really key. Did you mention gift recognized? No, I need to do that. <laughs> gift recognized. That we, are, uh, we believe that God put gifts in people. Mm -hmm. And we need to help discover that. And, uh, uh, you know, gifts are really discovered, not really a self-identification, but also uh, the body recognizes the gift in individuals, mm -hmm. not right. just it's self-identified. Mm -hmm. And that's a process, but uh, that's important to us as well, is to identify people's gifts and help it's them see. It's important to the people, too. So many people Absolutely. come and visit, and because of that, we, yeah. are, we are open to the gifts. Yeah. So next chapter. You know, what's happening next? <laughs> the Lord's really given us a vision that we would, um, that, that, that we would then, um, uh, the, the vision is kind of given us is, or kind of has, <laughs> that is that um, we want to build a community center mm -hmm. that happens to house a church. It's kind of a different take versus a, a church that serves a community that God has really given us this vision that we would actually have a community center and we happen to have a church there. Like for instance, we'd love to have a daycare that serves the community with, mm -hmm. with a loving uh, staff that understands how to care for kids. Mm -hmm. We'd like to have a cafe. And um, uh, you know, again, it might be simple, but a, a, way for, a place for people to come and hang out and build relationships and share Christ and, and be an a, a atmosphere of his presence. We'd love to have a community room where people can come and. Maybe families have reunions. So uh, again, just different ways for gatherings, make it available for them to come. Obviously we have a worship center mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I believe that the Lord is developing within us even a training center mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that could develop in time uh, in that. So we, we'd be able to accommodate that. And then, um, and then the possibility of having a community, uh, a seniors activity center for for seniors just to come in time in. for us yeah, yeah no, no way man i'm way far away <laughs> way from in that. the future <laughs> yeah, yeah we got too much to do That's right. <laughs> but uh, so these are things that a vision that god has given us and and uh, mm -hmm. we've been sharing that and it's really uh, connecting with people and i'm excited to see how the lord is going to unfold that yeah, yeah absolutely. well we want to thank you for again whether you're joining us today or whether you're watching this later we want to thank you for Again, uh, those of us, those of you that have been a part of Crossroads, maybe it's for a short season, maybe it's for a longer season, but the fact is that your season mattered to us mm -hmm. and you were valuable uh, to Absolutely. us and, and, and what God was doing in and through us, teaching us. We were learning from you, you were learning from us, right. we were learning from God. And uh, so we're just blessed to be able to share a little bit of what the Lord did over 25 years. And mm -hmm. thank you for being 
a part of it. And I just want to bless you. Jeremiah 6.16 says, stand at the crossroads and ask for the godly way. Walk in it and you will find rest for your soul. Amen. And I just want to bless you that you will be a person that will always seek the Lord and then do what he says and walk that path. And if you're truly obeying God, doing what he says, you will find peace in your heart and peace in your family and he will get the glory. Mm -hmm. So Amen. God bless you. It's been great to just reminisce a little bit mm -hmm. yeah. together. And I'm sure as you're watching this, you're reminiscing as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, till we meet again, we want to continue to believe, believe big, big belong, belong strong, and build a legacy. legacy.